prepare yourself for a life-changing journey into the world of the forward focus and max flow algorithm. I'm Sam Bajanis and I'll be guiding you on this enlightening and mind-expanding journey. Prepare yourself. First, you need to understand flow networks. A flow network is basically a start pipe connected to an end pipe with a whole bunch of very complex pipes interconnected in between. Here on this slide are some examples of very simple flow networks. They are easiest to represent as a directed graph with weighted edges, where the weights represent the amount of, it's easiest to think of it as water, that can flow between two nodes. So this slide shows an extremely simple flow network that's completely linear. So here's a start node S connected to another node, and the capacity of that pipe is C0. Then there's an arbitrary number of pipes in between, and finally there's the nth pipe, which has the capacity Cn, and that's connected to the output T. So then the total flow from S to T, which is the total amount of water you'd be able to push through the pipes at any one time, is whatever the minimal capacity of one of the intermediate pipes between S and T is. How this is determined will become more obvious later on. The third line down introduces a new sort of notation, the flow and capacity notation. Here, f of zero is the amount of water currently flowing down the pipe from S to this first vertex, and c zero is the capacity of this pipe, so the maximum amount of water that is able to flow down at any one time. Here, on the fourth line, is a worked example of how to work out the maximum amount of flow they can pass from S to T. So here the first pipe has a capacity of seven, but a flow of only three. That flow of only three is because the second pipe it connects to has only a capacity of three. So if the first pipe tried to output seven units into this second pipe, those extra units would have nowhere to go, so it does not work. Determining the maximum flow through a network becomes significantly more difficult as the size and complexity of the network increases. Many networks in practical applications have on the order of millions of vertices. So, because of these complexities, we need a more general method that will let us solve these without just intuitively trying to see the answer. Thankfully, the forward focus method comes to our rescue. The first step of this algorithm is to initialize the flow of every vertex to zero. This th means that there is currently no water being pushed between any vertices. The next step of the algorithm is a loop that says, while it is possible to send more water throughout the network, determine a new path to fill with water. Satisfying this condition is something we'll look into more later. So the step is to pick a path through the network that starts at the source node and ends all the way at the sync node. Then once you've chosen a path, you write out the list of flows and capacities of all the nodes along the line of the path. Then what you have to do is figure out the maximal flow that can pass along this subpath and then add that maximal flow to each of the component parts of that path. So, for this path, we see that the minimum value, or rather the bottleneck, would be the value 4 here. That is because if 10 tries to pass more than 4 units into uh, the 4, then it'll just lose the remaining 6, so it only ever passes 4 into it, and then whatever comes into a vertex comes out of it, so 4 passes 4 out, so 8 receives 4, then sends 4 out to 10. So we can upgrade, update all these values and then add them back to the graph and repeat. So we pick another path through the network from S to T. Now we write down this new path and then we need to determine what is the amount of flow we can pass through it. So the minimal compa capacity pipe is this one that can accept five. However, uh, even though this middle one that can accept a capacity of eight uh, is greater than five, it is already filled with some water. So then we just have to pick the minimum amount uh, that is possible to pass through all these pipes, which is four. 
and then we update both the nodes in the path and then place them back and repeat. So pick a new path, um, write down all the nodes, figure out what the amount to push is here. Here it's only one because uh, we only have one space left here. Uh, upgrade, uh, update, and continue. Now pick another path through. This one's very simple again, so continue. So this one gets a bit more interesting. It's a much longer path, and you can see here we're traveling backwards along an edge, this four slash four edge. So what you do when you re reach a backwards edge is you reverse the flow. So what we have is uh, four elements passing into it. So then we minus the amount of flow passing into it from its current flow value. So four minus four is just zero. And then we update all the pieces, all the components of this path, and then continue repeating. Again here we have a backwards edge, so you just minus from its capacity the amount uh, that we're passing into it, which we know is two, since the source node had, can pass only a maximum of two before it reaches its capacity. On every iteration of the algorithm, we test this condition well possible to send more flow. So this means that when you try and find a path from the start node to the sync node, you aren't uh, met by any impossible edges. An impossible edge is a full edge because it'd be impossible to send more flow down an edge than the capacity of that edge. So here it already is filled with nine units of flow and has a capacity of nine. So trying to add any more does nothing. Same for this 88 and the 1616. So here we even try reversing the flow down this point up here and then reversing the flow up an edge that has zero flow in it currently. This is impossible to do because that would cause it to have a negative flow, which does not really make sense. So because this condition is no longer true, we can end the loop and then return the maximum flow. So the maximum flow is defined as just the sum of all edges incident to the sync node. Uh, which here is the sum of 9, 10, and 10, which is 29. Then we just do a very quick sanity check to make sure what goes into the network comes out of the network. So here we can see we do 5 plus 15, which is 20, plus 9, which is 29, going into the network, and 29 out, so sanity check passes. Yes, yay. So now we go on to what is the complexity of this algorithm? How does it scale as we increase the size of the network? So for our worst case, we assume that every iteration, instead of choosing to push as much flow as possible down a path, we only push one unit of flow and we make a terrible choice of what a path is and asymptotically it ends up using almost every single edge. And then the number of iterations will be uh, the max flow of the network because we only push one unit of flow on every iteration. Um, so to reach the maximal flow, we have to perform that many iterations. So the time complexity is just number of iterations times number of work done per iteration, which is just this. Thank you very much, and goodbye.